everyone. Thank you all for being with us for our Build Your Business Wednesday event. Um, today, we have the privilege of listening to Ms. Danette Moss as she discusses the following topics, how to set up your business for success and longevity, as well as how to uh, have an, a business strategy, excuse me, and the importance of business plans. So Ms. Danette Moss is the owner of Let's Talk Strategies, which is an Atlanta-based business strategy and product productivity development consulting firm that helps busy female entrepreneurs in service-based industries by creating systematic strategies for their businesses, both on and offline, resulting in an in increase in business profits and clients. She is also the author of the book, Let's Talk Strategies, Conversations with Millionaires and Highly Successful Entrepreneurs, The Solopreneur's Guide to Success, as well as the co-author of the book, Conversations with Experts, Do What You Love, Get, what, get Paid What You're Worth. So in a moment at the top of the chat, there will be a few links for the Innovation Center as well as contact information for Ms. Danette and the link to an action guide worksheet that you can utilize during this presentation. Um, our social media handle, website, and email will be posted there as well. And also there will be a link to a post-event survey that we would like for you to fill out at the conclusion of the presentation today. Lastly, please remember to mute your mics and if you have any questions, please ask them in the chat and include your email address just in case we run out of time. So at about quarter to 11, we will go ahead and have our Q&A session so that um, we can address any questions that you have regarding the presentation. So without further ado, please welcome Ms. Danette Moss. Well, hello everyone. I'm so excited to be here. And thank you so much, Tiffany, for that awesome introduction. Um, as she mentioned, I am Danette Moss. I'm known as the strategy lady over on the uh, Instagram platform that I love hanging out at. But most importantly, I am a serial woman entrepreneur who loves to um, work with women just like myself. I'm a mom and a wife entrepreneur, and I'm extremely excited about being here today to give you all these tools. Now, as Tiffany said, uh, we've only got really one hour, so I want to make sure I kind of stay on uh, task here this morning. Um, I am going to ask that you guys hold your uh, questions for uh, towards the end, even make sure that you go ahead and at least drop them inside of the chat as well so that we can kind of go back through them. Um, it's my hope that you do have questions so that you can go ahead and not only take them to use for your business, but also take, uh, take them to uh, implement them in your life. Um, our topic today is strategy for business success, proven strategies for conquering those challenges. And this is for not just for new business owners, this is for existing business owners as well. So she's already kind of done uh, an, an introduction um, of who I am, but that's a picture of me, of course. <laughs> um, I'm Danette. I am your business clarity and system strategist. I believe that we need to get clear on things before we go full-fledged into business. And as I mentioned a moment ago, that mom and wife entrepreneur um, is who I am. I enjoy working with women in the service-based uh, industry, whether they're coaches, um, consultants, et cetera. Does not mean I won't work with men as well, but that is my target audience. I'm not gonna go ahead and stay here since we're tight on time. I'm gonna go ahead and continue on. And let's talk about why we're here, right? You know, I, I love the fact that this topic is all about business. And so the biggest question that I want you all to kind of get clear on or to ask yourself is why go self-employed? Why become a business owner? You got to know your why. And most of us start because someone told us they think we would do good in it, but we really don't know why we're starting to do it. And as you can see here, many people do it. Why? Because they want to leave that nine to five to start a business. The key reason uh, for actually being in your business, we think, is the ease of really um, starting it and being able to be your own employer. But the good thing now with COVID going the way that it did or the pandemic, I hate to mention that, is that a lot of us didn't have to miss a beat because the internet is right there for us to move forward and to um, have the success that I know that we can truly have in our businesses. Now, if you hadn't had a chance to download the action plan that I sent, please grab it. I believe she did send it out via email and then you guys should have access to it via this link. Um, and um, in there, you will be able to follow along with me. Don't um, get 
you know, flustered if I'm moving too fast, because unfortunately I am on a time <laughs> schedule here, you'll have it where you can kind of go back through it later on. I'm not sure if this recording is going to be available for you all. I'm sure Tiffany will mention that a little later on if it is or if it isn't. But my whole uh, desire is that you guys will take that action plan and begin to peel back the onion layer um, so that you can do the things that you really need to and want to do, you know, to help take your business to the next level. All right, so here's some quick learning objectives. We're gonna be talking about recognizing the advantages and disadvantages to starting a business. Um, the whole thing is when you start your business, there's some key things that we need to identify um, with our business, products, services, and we need to make sure that we understand and know those key motivators. Um, and last but not least, we're in business, of course, not only to bless others, but to make money. So we got to think through with an uh, a, uh, income strategy as well. All right, yes, I do see that she did put uh, the um, link inside of the chat there for you guys. So secondly, we're going to identify the personal characteristics and natural abilities that will make it easier for you to start a service. There are some areas you all that we're not very good at, but we can learn them. And there are some that we are just a natural at. And these things are very important when it comes to running a business. And then we want to clarify some of those common challenges that we face when starting um, or owning and operating an existing business. Number four, create the strategies for conquering the challenges because we're going to have challenges. They're going to come up and, um, you know, how are you going to get through them? You know, this journey um, as a business owner can be challenging, but, you know, when you prepare, it helps you to kind of go through it uh, relatively uh, smoothly or easier, not to say that you won't run into some issues. And then we're going to talk about identifying some specific actions that you can take to overcome those obstacles that, that are going to occur. And then also create the plan for setting up your service and product business success. Um, and I do want you all to know again, as I mentioned, Q&A will take place at the end. So please don't forget to write down your questions. All right, here's some expectations. You got that uh, action plan in front of you. So before you start the session, I did want you to take a minute if you looked and you opened it up for you to kind of look at what it is you want to do. Think about at least three skills that you expect to gain from today's session. And I'm going to tell you, even if you are an existing business owner, we all still stand to learn something. So just kind of take the time and think about what is it that you would want out of this? What's your expectation for you even coming to this particular presentation? All right, there's learning objective number one, recognize the advantage and disadvantage of a service or product-based business. Um, we need to identify some of those key motivators, okay? Now, before we get to it, these are the questions again that I want you to think through. Why are you doing what you're doing? It is so important as a business owner that we understand our why. So do what you want to do was the key reason why I thought I wanted to be in business. Then I found out that running a business was much more harder than working for someone. I also decided that I wanted to take charge of my own work life. I didn't want people dictating what I needed to do or what they wanted me to do, how they wanted me to do it. And I needed more flexibility. I'm a mother of five and a grandmother of four. Talk about flexibility. I needed it for my life. And also as a business owner, for some of us, no more commuting. Some of us still do go into offices. I operate now out of my home office and I have an office located in the Buckhead area of Atlanta. And then I decided also that I could dictate how much I wanted to make my own earning potential that I did not have to work for someone else and they dictate what I needed to make or what they thought uh, my value or what I was worth in a nutshell. So let's talk about success factors of running a product service. I'm trying to catch up here with my link here. All right, guys, there's some advantages and some disadvantages. We talked about the flexibility piece, but also 
uh, some advantages uh, for minimal startup costs when you're starting a business. A lot of us get hung up on thinking we have to have so many different things before we get started. Please don't let that be you. There are some bare minimal things that you need as a business owner. Some people disagree with me when I say you need a website. You may not necessarily need it when you first start out, but at some point you will need it because people need uh, a way to find you. They need a different type of footprint. We can no longer just depend solely on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, all those different platforms, because if you get put in Facebook or IG jail, right, even you can get put in LinkedIn jail as well. Where are you going to go if you're just solely depending on social media to uh, put, put yourself there? So the biggest thing that I want to make sure that you all make sure that you stay on top on is stand in touch with the advantages and disadvantages as well. Now, the disadvantage for work life and discipline and isolation and uh, multiple hats is when you get started in this journey as a business owner, you may not be able to scale as of yet and by getting and bringing someone else into your business. You may not be able to start right out with a virtual assistant. You may not be able to get you a, 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 a online business manager. We call them OBMs out there, but just familiarize yourself with those advantages and disadvantages. Being familiar with your these things here, advantage and disadvantage will help set you up the proper way and it won't put you in a panic state. It's when we're not dealing with those advantages and disadvantages that we run into snags. When um, I was presented with a snag yesterday of power going out because we were raining here in Atlanta, I had the tenacity to push through. I have my iPad, right? Advantage and disadvantage. If I'm not um, in an office, I'm in my home, my power can go out. I had to think about all the different things that I needed to do, um, how I was gonna get through it. And that dealt with my minimal startup costs, even though I've been in for a while with it. What are the things that I need to have that if certain things happen, that I can still continue to move forward? All of that can be put into your startup costs. Bare bone basics, computers, um, nowadays cameras, if you don't have a camera, uh, most of them come with your computers. Um, um, I personally believe that if you start from scratch with at least having a bookkeeper, still startup costs, bare bone basics, you may not know what you may need the bookkeeper for, but even sit down and talk with the bookkeeper when you're getting ready to get started so that he or she can tell you the needs, the things that you may need as you begin to go on this entrepreneur or business owner journey. All right, I'm not gonna hang there too long because we gotta skip through because of time. All right, the ideal personal characteristics of an entrepreneur. Inside of your action plan that you guys have, there is an area to help you identify this, okay? Because there's natural abilities that we all have that will make whatever business venture that you decided to go in, um, it'll make it easier. Whatever you're natural at, I'm just gonna be honest, let that be the leading thing. Try your best not to try to do everything that everybody else is doing because they said you should do it and this is the way you should do it you will find yourself more frustrated going that way. Hone in on your ideal personal characteristics, your ideal traits. Run with those first. I found that the minute I tried to do something that everybody else was doing, it drove me crazy. The things that I was not very good at, I learned that the best thing for me to do was to outsource it. Now you may be saying, hey, Danette, how am I gonna outsource this? I don't have any money, I'm new at this. Listen, there are so many different things that you can do to put in place if you can't outsource. You can outsource it to a software. It can be Dubsado, it could be ClickUp, it could be so many different things. But then in order to do that, those things are called systems that you have in place. So remember, your ideal personal characteristics will allow you, when you operate in them, to work at what you work best at. The things that don't mesh with you well, go ahead and consider outsourcing those or get you some training on it. 
All right, in front of you on the screen here now, we've got some key things that I truly believe that every entrepreneur truly needs to have success in their business and not just their business, in their life. How many of you all know that we cannot separate the two? You'll hear me quite often if you follow me on any platform that I'm on, you will hear me talk about um, life and business. These four areas, self-motivation, business and industry knowledge, time management and organizational skills is a must when it comes to owning and operating a business. And this is for people that are starting out new and existing business owners. The reason why I work so well now as a business clarity and system strategist is because I had to climb through these areas and I'm still working on it. I'm still working with making sure that I stay top of game with this business industry knowledge. I'm still working on making sure that I maximize my time management. I'll have a timer when I'm doing different things. This particular presentation is time. Um, not only will I have something to pop up for me, thank God for Tiffany's in the background who will give me pointers. Time management is key as you flow through business. But I believe the bigger two Believe it or not, out of all of these, although all four are very important, I believe that self-motivation and organizational skills is going to, going to be the key thing that will help us with business industry knowledge and time management. When you're organized, you can do things systematically and you'll flow better, but you got to be motivated. There's nobody knocking on the door to tell you, hey, it's time for you to get up. Hey, you got to do this. Did you send this email out? Did you do these things? You are that business person that um, you are the owner. <laughs> You're the boss. So these four skill sets, self-motivation, business and industry knowledge, time management and organizational skill, skills is a must when um, at, to, to be an, an effective business owner. Pardon me. Also, management skills, marketing skills, and people skills. Now, these right here, in my opinion, are skills that can be learned, right? Not everyone comes with these skills. Some of us may not ever even want to do the marketing piece. We may be good at it, or we may be, you know, not so good with it. And the truth be told, a lot of times this is an area that will help you really launch your business further on into the deep. We've got a lot of people that do very well with marketing, but they're not good with the management piece. So they may have someone else take over that piece. But you know that if you're running a business, you got to get yourself out in front of people. So marketing is going to be very important. So these other skills here, management skills, marketing skills, and people skills, we got to be nice and we got to want to talk, talk to people. Or if you're not so good with people, please hire somebody to be the front person for you. It's none like having a good business, good idea, good product, yet we're not a people person. We're not nice. And if you know that about yourself, get someone else to represent you. All right, here's some entrepreneur skills. I think I kind of pinpointed a moment ago on them very briefly, but we gotta have some self-discipline here. And a good business owner, a good entrepreneur, um, needs to be okay with being a decision maker and a problem solver because you're going to run into problems and you have got to be able to get through that, push through it. You got to push through it and you got to be able to be the one to make the proper decision. If things fall, how are you going to deal with it? Are you just going to run and crawl up under the rock and hide and think it's going to go away? I think not. You got to get in front of it. So this goes back to being prepared, that advantage and disadvantage piece. List down some of those things that you think you may be presented with. It will help you draft out and begin to, to look at areas that you may need to put systems in place to solve said problems in a nutshell. Now, I believe also that a good skill for an entrepreneurial skill set piece is you got to be a visionary, right? You got to be able to look into the future. You know, we've got things called mission statements and vision statements. You got to have a vision. I always say, write the vision, make it plain so that you can clearly see it. And for others that see it, they can run with it. 
If you can't see down the line where you think your business should be or where it's going to be, then why are you in business? So if you hadn't done that as well, consider writing out your vision statement and a mission statement. They're two different things. I can't go knee deep into them right now, but I, I would encourage you guys to check that out. Google it and look to see the difference between the two, but nonetheless work on both. And also you have to be able to adapt, adaptability and perseverance. Whew. I'm going to be honest, this journey as an entrepreneur, you have to be able to persevere. Um, you've got to have stick to itness and tenacity to go through and push through the other side because it's a lonely journey. This is not for the, um, well, let me just say you got to have thick skin. <laughs> you got to have thick skin. Um, there's going to be days that you do not want to get up and go or things are gonna happen where you're gonna to wanna to give up, but you gotta persevere and get through it. Also, entrepreneur skills uh, that you need as well as you need to be okay with searching and testing and looking at the market. It's very important that you understand the market that you're in, AKA the business that you decided to get into, the service that you decided to offer, the products that you decided to sell. Um, it, I'm always amazed when I meet people um, that actually start selling something and they're selling that thing and they're not presenting themselves, especially direct marketers. And I have nothing against it because I've been there, done that. And there's pieces of the puzzle that I still like about it. But when I'm training and helping people that are uh, direct marketers or they're selling uh, other items that are not necessarily their item, they do affiliate marketing, et cetera, they're so much into selling that product and they're not doing anything to differentiate themselves. So you really need to get very clear you know, if you want to grow, you got to understand the market that you're in. And of course, it goes without saying that you need self-reliance, self-confidence. You got to uh, uh, be able to um, be committed to this journey. And competitiveness is key because there's always somebody out here that's doing the same thing that you're doing. And if you allow the fact that somebody's been out here doing what you're doing and they've been out there longer doing it to stop you, well, then you're never going to keep going. Somebody's always out there doing what you're doing. As a matter of fact, develop a relationship with them. It's okay. I'm on a platform out there on Clubhouse where I meet a lot of people that do the same exact thing that I do. And there may be some things that I don't like to do that they're good at. This is where you develop a rapport, develop a relationship. And hey, you can send that a particular task that you don't want to do over to them as well. All right. So... Inside of your action plan, guys, you got an action step section, and it's going to be throughout this whole presentation. Again, due to time, I'm going to kind of move past some of those. But action step number one here, which pros and cons are the biggest benefits for you and which ones will present the biggest challenge? Write those down answer those questions because there is pros and cons. I don't care how we want to try to look past it. No, it's not all roses. I am the one that will tell you the truth. And then make sure that you guys look at the, uh, the uh, personal characteristics and rank yourself. I believe it's, I think it's like one through seven um, in there, but rank yourself so you can really see where you stand at. And then rank your entrepreneur characteristics in uh, the order that you need to rank them in. Um, I believe that surveying myself and ranking myself and really being honest with where I really am is a good starting point. It's a place to see where I am emotionally, mentally, uh, business, the knowledge that I need to get, et cetera. And so I'm encouraging you guys to do the same. Now, there's some common challenges for business owners. Um, we've kind of touched on some of those. I'm kind of intertwining a lot of them right now uh, due to time. We want to talk about our next learning objective is to clarify those common challenges that you as a business owner, new or existing, of course, um, that those challenges that you're going to face when you uh, start your business. Here in front of you guys, I've got a big list of the common challenges. Sometimes we need help with direction. 
I always tell people, although I don't call myself a coach, I call myself a business clarity and system strategist, it's still a coach. Sometimes we need help with finding direction. We need help with which way we need to go. And sometimes we need uh, help with staying motivated, right? And that's a mindset thing. There's gonna be all kinds of different things here. I'm not gonna pinpoint them all, but you all see them in front of you. You wanna learn some key things. You need some internal protocols. You're gonna to wanna to have to learn how to attract new business, develop strategies. How are we gonna retain customers if you're in a service-based industry? They just don't come just because you put out a sign or you threw your website up. These are some key things. One of the things I want you all to think about is that that's not me syndrome. There's a lot of us that fall down in that area. Um, there are going to be some um, quality standards that you're going to need. You are going to want to uh, deal with the fact that some of us are going to be struggling with the lack of differentiation. We got to what makes you different. Don't get out and try to be like someone else because you won't flow well with it. I promise you. I used to uh, struggle with that. You know, I thought that I needed to be like this person that I followed, or maybe if I did it this way, all it did was result in this bottom right one, it resulted in burnout. Don't let that be you. And then I broke them down in here. I'm going to go ahead and go through because I am going to speak on some of those. All right, here's our second action step. What key challenges do you face or fear most in setting up and growing your business? I wanna encourage you all to list the top five. Try not to go too far past that. One key challenge I'll share with you that most people will struggle with is the work-life balance. We need to consider timing. You know, when you're running a business, like I said earlier, people are not going to be there to wake you up. You got to get up, treat your business just like you would if you were going to a nine to five. OK, you know, set some parameters. Um, for me, my other challenge was going straight to my email, going straight to the platforms that I know people were sending me messages. Um, I had to hone in on uh, what I wanted to do first. So I always talk to people about learning how to identify your business activities. When you identify your business activities, this will help you with the, the base challenges that you deal with. So when you list down your top five, it's my desire and hope that you all list down the fact that you may be running through some challenges of identifying those key areas that you struggle with. When you list them down, now you can begin to put a process or a system in place that will allow you to, one, see what it is that you do best, two, see what it is you need to work on, three, find out what it is that you need to either send out to someone else or four, scrap it, okay? Most of our challenges come from us either A, trying to take on too much, or B, not having enough knowledge in those areas to move forward in it. Um, B, we're embarrassed because we don't quite know what it is that we need to do, but we don't want everybody to, uh, to know that we are actually struggling with that. Don't let that be the case. Get out there and get you some help. Um, so list all of your challenges, but focus first on the top five. All right, creating strategies to overcome the challenge. As a business strategist, that is my jam. I believe the one best way to create a strategy to overcome any challenge that you'll have, again, is to get it out of your head down on paper. It is the best thing back in the day, I would say, since sliced bread. List the things that you are going to work on on a day-to-day -day basis and categorize them. You can start by saying, this is operational, this is marketing. You know, just break down the key things that you do on a consistent day-to-day -day basis, even if you're not quite 
ready to categorize them. But as you write them down and then you begin to list the steps out that it takes for you to do what it is that you're saying you're doing. If you're not quite sure and you hadn't taken the time to list them, today is the day to start. So if I come into my office, what is the first thing I do? When I open up my email, how long do I take? You know, for me, I have my things in Asana um, and I let that pop up at night. If I have not completed a task at night, I put it back on my list and it's there. I even go through everything that I do, I'll timestamp it, AKA flip my little uh, timer on or uh, there's a little thing where you can like an hourglass drop thing that will drop down. I need to see how much time it's taking me to do everything that I'm doing. That's a strategic approach. Creating strategies to overcome any challenges that you have by doing it the way that I just mentioned it, that I just mentioned to you guys, you guys, you'll be able to catch some of those areas and you can begin to process them. You can't even get to what you may hear a little bit later here, workflows, if you don't know what it is that you're doing. So I encourage you, as you begin to create any strategies to overcome any challenges that you have, the best way to start or the first place to start is by getting it out of your head down on paper. List out everything that you're doing. You will find that you'll be able to even catch the things that you don't like doing. And you'll be able to quickly say, okay, I'm going to put this over here in the, I'm going to outsource this, or I'm going to give this to another team person. Uh, sometimes having too many things close to you, you cannot see it clear and, and you just stay flustered. Give it to somebody else to do it. Let them work on it. You should be working on what's best, the things that you work best at, what's in your real wheelhouse, the things that resonate most with your personality. Um, even if you don't have the money as a startup to do it, put it in a systematic way via Asana, or if you don't want to start out with that way, list it down on paper. That way, when you're ready to give it to someone else, a virtual assistant or an uh, online business manager, because you took time to write things down, that's a strategic approach. You can easily give it to them because now you know what it is that needs to be done. You may not know how to do it, and that may be in their wheelhouse, but at least they can see those steps. Okay, that was a learning objective. I see it was out of order, pardon me. I kind of touched on laying the groundwork. There are some things that you can do before you launch to get in front of uh, your problems that you are going to face. And of course, you can start by researching your industry. Uh, you'll hear a lot of us talk about who your target audience is, who your competition is. This list here is real. Research your industry and do it in a thorough way. And if you don't quite understand how to do it, there's so many different uh, um, resources out there. You got your HubSpots, you got, you got your Tiffany's, you got your Danettes, you got other coaches that can walk you through it. Simply go out to even Google and type in how to research my industry and my competition. You need to know what it is that they're doing. Not that you're going to copy them, but there's nothing new under the sun. So don't feel weird if you find that you're doing something that someone else is doing, but you want to have clarity and get clear on that. You also want to clearly uh, define your goals. Why are you in business? What is the end result? A lot of times when you remember your why and you think about the end result, the end result is the goal, right? When you know your goal, you can backwards plan just about everything that you need to do in your business. And I believe in backwards planning because it is key in order for me to get ready for any event that I have planned or that I'm going to do. I have the date in mind and then I backwards plan everything that I need to do to get there. And that's what I'm encouraging you guys to do. Also, if you can, get yourself a support team. If you are not able to do that financially right now, it's okay. Okay go out on different platforms, get with people, develop some relationships, um, get some accountability uh, partners, get people that will not allow you to quit and stop. The big one also is make a business plan. Now, I know that some of us may think, well, I, I don't know where to start. I don't know where to go. 
There are several resources out here. You've got the Small Business Association, Administration, pardon me, that's out there that can help you. You have, um, I believe Tiffany has uh, something that she's doing where she's dealing with business planning. There's so many different resources, but understand that having a business plan is important. If you struggle with the business plan, know that yes, if you get ready to go towards any banking institution, they're gonna be looking for that. And most of us may not get approved for trying to get upfront financial um, finances from them in the beginning because we're gonna be going off theory, the numbers, but data is still very important. If you're struggling with laying out that business plan, how about uh, setting up a marketing plan and work the marketing plan consistent? If you work your marketing plan consistent, you will get real numbers because you're going to start seeing things happen. And as you work through it, you will begin to get those real numbers to even put in your business plan. Know that a business plan is forever changing and you'll be constantly revisiting it. And then, of course, earlier, I kind of mentioned to you all uh, about getting things out of your head down on paper, and that's outlining your operational process. When you outline your operational process, uh, you can develop what we talk about in our world as workflows and SOPs, standard operation procedures. There's so many different things that you're going to need. And I'm going to be honest, there's no way to skip this. I failed doing this. I rushed past and I had to come back and I had to learn how to keep things simple, but I also had to learn how to use the SMART method. I had to be specific I had to make things measurable. I had to really be able to hone in those things. And I encourage you guys also to look up the SMART model, the SMART method, and look at those things. It's gonna help you as you define your business goals, as you look through business planning, marketing planning, et cetera. Now, securing financing for your business cannot be done unless people can see those numbers, as I mentioned you know, begin to lay out that business plan, but get for real and be for real with those numbers. Get with a bookkeeper. They will help you fundamentally put the things in motion that you need to have up front, things that you can write off, things that um, you need to know that you're gonna need to, to purchase. All these things matter. Securing your financing, if you are not real with your numbers or don't understand your numbers, you won't be able to secure it. Um, also, when you got those numbers together, and you can see clear that things are not necessarily where you want it to be, or you have some sense of where you want to go, you will be able to begin to create your pricing strategies, how much you're going to charge people. Are you going to do group coaching in my, in my case? Is it going to be one-on-one? -on -one? Um, when I begin to list all those different things down, um, I was clear on all the things that I needed to do, where I needed to go, which direction I needed to go in, and I understood my worth. I have taking the time to invest in myself. If I can invest in myself, surely I'm going to give you 100% and I'm not going to worry about someone else's pockets. I'm going to present my pricing. I'm going to work through it strategically. I'm going to look at how much did it take for me to plan this event? How much is it going to cost? I mean, how much is it going to cost for me to plan this event? Uh, how many people am I going to have to pay to work and operate with me. All that comes into this pricing strategy. A lot of times we shoot ourselves in our foot, we charge too low, and then we don't make anything and we pay out more than we got in because we did not count the cost. We did not list, you know, the cost, how much it was going to take, the things that we had to print out. Your time is, is costly too. List all that out so that you won't cheat yourself. And then of course, make it official, put it out there. Um, I did have this create an initial marketing plan kind of out of order because I put the business one there for a reason because business planning is important. If you don't have clarity on that, you do need that, but make sure you still have an initial, initial marketing plan. It is going to be key. In my opinion, it's going to be very helpful with your business plan as well. Okay, here I have, it's safer to make transitions slowly. I know you guys have heard people say, get out there and just do it and just run with it. And some of us can do that, but sometimes it's okay to take your time. And I'm not going to say sometimes, I'm going to say all the time. 
Take your time, do what you do best and give the rest to someone else. But when you take your time, it will allow you to mature in the business that you're in. It will allow you to see what it is that you need to do. It'll allow you to see clearly the pros and cons of owning a business. Um, as some of us are business owners that are still on a nine to five. And please don't get caught up in the saying that if you're still working a nine to five, that there is no clear way that you're really a real business owner. The reality is, is you still gotta eat. If you got children, you still got, you know, your children gotta eat, you still got a car note, you still got a mortgage, you still got rent, whatever your circumstance or situation is. Don't get caught in the sauce of people out there in the industry telling you you're not a real business owner until you're working it fully. You may have to do it in a slower way, but the whole thing is, is commitment and consistency, and you will find yourself moving forward and having much more success than some of the people that may have jumped out there without a plan, okay? The sink and swim thing is good for some, but in my opinion, I think having a plan will help you. And then you can start seeing where as you begin to make the said finances or the money that you really want to make and it is giving you more at least two to three times more than the amount that you made at the nine to five that you worked in then you can may possibly start seeing hey maybe i can you know uh, start scaling back on hours if you work something part-time or finding out how you can shift your schedule differently where you can maybe work your business in the daytime and maybe work at night make it work for you again as your business begins to pick up you will begin to clearly see what it is that you need to do for you, not what you think you need to do because somebody else said it. I'm just, I need to just, just take that home, you know, for you all, please go at your pace. And then at that point, you can decide, is it safe for me to remove myself, aka quit from the nine to five, if that is you? But let that decision be a wise, smart decision. And that decision will come with clearly seeing because you've written it down and you're mapping things out. Now, some of us may not have a financial safety net. You may hear some people tell you that you cannot start a business without it. Yes, you can. Shoestring budget. Do what you can do, but whatever you do, get started. But remember, as you start, write it down so you can clearly see where you're gifted at best and then where you can give the rest to someone else. If you do have a financial safety net or you're trying to decide how to set one up, here on the screen are some key things that you can do to move forward with it. The safety net will help you uh, push through and survive. I mean, it's real out here. Um, and if you could try to get yourself at least a couple months of your salary uh, put up because you're gonna have to be able to push through. It's gonna be a little rocky for a moment, but this too shall pass. I know that we are at the top of the hour almost, about a quarter till. So I'm gonna kind of move through here and we're gonna talk about working on some business skills that everyone needs if you lack those. And I'm gonna be honest, I believe that all of us, I can raise my hand and say that as well. I don't know where the camera is for you all to see it at, but identify your weak points, the skills that you're not very good at and get busy getting some help with those. There's online courses. There's local courses. The pandemic is you know, starting to loosen up some, so we're now able to go out some. But choose a course that will help you reach the goal that you want to reach. I used to be very guilty of signing up for everybody's courses, and, and sometimes I never even got through them. Choose courses that will help you meet your goal that's based on your goal. So let's work on your business skills, guys, because we're in business to make money. But if you don't quite know what you're doing, you got to get tight on those. Network and get advice. We're always out here talking to people. If you're not, then no one knows what you're doing. So networking is going to be very important. Network with other business people, even the people that do the same thing that you all do. And make those connections. And if you can, look for some mentors. Not everyone is going to charge you per se. Some people are going to be willing to mentor you, but no one is going to necessarily come to you. You got to come to them. You got to be bold. You got to be tenacious. You got to get down, out there and do it and feel comfortable with it. And you got to stay up to date, okay? Staying up to date of what's going on in your industry. Um, you can do that relatively easy 
look at the news feed, social media. There's so many resources out there. Um, and um, just stay on top of it so you can do what it is you need to do. Differentiate your business from others, from the competition. The way that you're going to do that is definitely knowing what it is that you do best and what it is that you have to offer that you can bring to it. And the way to do that is look at your strengths. What do you really specialize in? Move forward with it from that. People are generally going to be looking at things for specific things, not broad. So if you do that, you'll be good. Um, know how to articulate your value. We're all valuable. Make sure you show up in a valued way. Make sure you show up and that you can deliver. And if at, all, if at all possible, share the results, facts, figures, data. And learn from whatever it is that you're doing now. Those are transferable skills. Don't be afraid to pick the brains of your coworkers, your boss, people that you're around. Ask them, do you mind if we have some coffee time to talk? And be willing to pay for it as well. Some people are going to give it to you for free. Some people are going to um, uh, want to charge you. But most importantly, you all, keep your eyes on the prize. Okay? Keep reminding yourself why you're doing what you're doing. Create a mind map. I love those. Add my goals in it that I can see. I write, I mentioned earlier, write the vision down, write your, your, your uh, unique selling proposition, write your mission statement, your vision statement, get it down so that you can see it clear and keep your eyes on that prize. Always be open, in my opinion, to ask for feedback, figure out what's not working and make the right decision to keep moving with it or to scrap it. We talked about planning and outsourcing. I'm getting ready to open up the floor here for Q&A because we got some minutes here to spare. Um, make sure that you guys go back through the action plan that you have because I realized we had to move pretty fast here through this. But in there, you're gonna also be able to identify and mitigate each of the uh, strategies and tactics um, that you need to do. And again, don't be afraid to interview other small business owners. So you can begin to move forward and create your action plan. The action plan that you have in front of you will help you be able to move forward and create the action plan for the success that we know that you need in order to transition from being a, a, a nine to fiver or transform your now business, okay? Tiffany, I believe it's time for us to go ahead and open up for Q and A. Um, I'm going to encourage you guys to kind of go through what you have in front of you um, at your leisure, and I will tell you guys how to find me later, where we can even uh, have a conversation later on this. Okay. All right. So we do have some questions. Um, the first question is, my computer read, okay, there we go. Um, the first question is from uh, Miss Yasmin. Her question is, what are some specific ways an entrepreneur um, can pivot their business strategy when they're finding that the plan isn't sustainable or when they hit plateaus in their business? Well, in my opinion, I mentioned earlier, write the vision and make it plain, right? Mm -hmm. um, the more that you can kind of see what's not working or what is working, it will help you in the decision. When we talk about it's not sustainable or uh, you've hit that plateau of your business, you got to look at where you're being stuck at and why you're there. If you don't know why you're there, there's no way you can get unstuck, right? So again, there's reasons as to why you are in that spot. And it may be due to the fact that you don't have the correct systems or you don't know where to start, okay? Be okay with the fact that you may be in that spot. You want to be honest with where you are, but at least that's a starting point that you can clearly see that there's a missing element. And if you don't know how to get unstuck, well then again, Ms. Yasmin, there are other coaches, there's other um, resources that will help you see it. A lot of times we find ourselves in a stuck place because we're too broad. We're trying to serve too many people. We don't know which way to go. There's no real starting point for us because we're all over the place. You've heard some people say, well, who do you serve? Well, I serve everybody. No, you don't. And if you're serving everyone, odds are you're not getting anywhere. 
I see some more questions coming here. I hope that was helpful for you, Yasmin. Write it down. <laughs> there was another question um, from, oh, wait a minute. Now, now, now they're flowing in. Okay, so um, I hope that I pronounce your name right. Um, Tivia Abrams. Um, the question is, please share your daily strategy. How do you how do you start your day and structure your day? Well, my daily strategy starts with me coming down to my desk and opening up my Asana. I did not start out that way. I'm going to be honest with you all. I started out by writing it all down on a to-do list. So some of you guys may still work well with a to-do list, an agenda book, or a planner, right? But you need to list out the things that are, that are important for you to do throughout the day. I encourage you to also include your family, your day-to-day -day things that need to be in there as well. I think it's so important that you blend them all in. And then I just go down the list of importance. I don't beat myself up and I'm encouraging you guys not to beat yourself up if you don't complete a said task. What you may have to do is look at that task and figure out why it is that you didn't complete it. Did you try to overstuff your day? Or is it something that you're in fear of because you don't know about it? Be honest about it. Make sure you put it back on the list for the next day. But if you find yourself constantly getting past that one task every day, you need to sit down and really get real with yourself on that situation. You may be stuck in procrastination, right? And you might need to get some help to help you push past that. It's going to be a mindset thing. It's going to be very important as a business owner that you address that. I hope that helps. All right. Um, the next question is from Ms. April Thomas. Her question is, when should a new entrepreneur apply for a business license? And, um, and if, if you want, you can answer. If you want, I can take that. I'm going to answer a little bit. And I'm going to let you take it. Okay. April, some states require that you have it no matter what when you first start. Other states may, may not. Where my twin sister is in Maryland for what she's doing, they're not requiring that she has it. But I'm going to tell you, if you are growing a successful business, in my opinion, I think getting a business license, in my opinion, is a must. One reason being, with me, I love getting my hands on all types of opportunities aka government contracts, uh, my local community contracts. If I don't have a business license that I can present, in some cases, I won't be able to take advantage of getting involved in those things. Um, I can remember I started out with one of my businesses, went straight into business licensing and, and was upset that I had to pay these things because there were fees involved. And then I started another business where I didn't have it and went for years without it because I was actively doing things online. And then when other situations came up, when opportunities to get said monies, said grants and all of that, I wasn't able to take advantage of that because my business foundation wasn't set up correctly. So I encourage you to get it right away in my opinion. What do you think, Tiff? So um, my answer is this. So I actually, um, I am in the process of opening my own uh, consulting firm, right? And uh, it focuses on the 10 steps that you need to take um, to start your business. And there are, let me scroll down. There are actually eight steps in this 10 step process that you need to focus on before you even get to licensing permits mm -hmm. and certifications, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, if you have already um, gone through and mastered uh, your business plan, which has it's, it's a whole you know, thing in, in and of itself, if you've already mastered your business plan and you have that you know, um, solidified, if you've done your market research, if you've gone over funding, business locations, business structures, um, solidified your business name, registered your business, and gone over federal and state tax ID requirements, then and only at that time should you begin to delve into what licenses, permits, and certifications you may need for your location and for your specific business. So um, if, if that is something that, that, if, that you want to you know, speak to me about, just definitely let me know. I'll put my contact information in the chat. But yeah, there, that, that's my answer. I mean, there's, depending on your location, there's always going to be different requirements mm -hmm. anyway. But other than that, there are eight steps that you need to really solidify and make sure that you have um, concrete and down on paper 
whether it's physical paper or you know word document that you need to have those before you even get to uh licensing requirements you know and, and i agree with you on that one tiffany you know when i mentioned that i think you should get it right away that's when you're when if when you say the doors are open and i am ready to move forward and start getting uh my your, your customers and start to serve people you in my opinion you should have it at that point but those key steps that tiffany was talking about that's going to be something that you have to go through. You won't even know how to get a business license or the proper business license or the proper NACES number and all these things you're going to need if you don't go through those processes. So yes, do not skip those said things. But when you are ready to say, hey, I'm hanging my shingles up, or, you know, to, to go live, I am announcing that I'm a business owner and I'm doing this, at that point, please have it if at all possible, um, but go through those steps that Tiffany said. And yes, she will help you real good at that because she's that business uh, foundational type uh, person, the formation. I don't work on the formation piece, but I can still help and guide you or send you to Tiffany for that. <laughs> all right, awesome. So question from um, Tori Biggs. Um, what inspired you personally to start a business? Well, um, Tori, I think you weren't here earlier. I mentioned that I am a mother of five and a grandmother of four. And although I may not look like I'm 53, I don't mind mentioning my age, I'll be 53 next week or week after next, the 18th. Um, the big thing for me is when I worked for others, I worked in IT. So although the money was good, I didn't have any time with my children and I needed to have that time. It was, it was very, it was valuable to me after raising the older two. I started seeing that I missed out a lot. They missed out a lot. Now some of us don't have that option, but it was really, really important to me that I could one, do what I really wanted to do and the thing that I really love and that um, I could take my family along with the ride, right? And that I can really do what it is that I thoroughly enjoy. So that was my personal reason. The first personal reason, the, sex, the second thing was is that being a mom and wife preneur, there were so many areas or pain points for myself that I wish I had that no one ever gave to me. And I really purpose it in my heart that if I could get the training that I needed, that I wanted to give back to other women like myself. It was very important to me that I did just that, that um, I can reach back to other mom and wife preneurs because I understand and know their pain points. I know how it is to feel guilty and be all over the place and not know where to go, where to start. Wish I could do this with my business, uh, but I got the children to raise and how I'm going to do this. So I, I quickly put those steps in place to help myself and to help them. And so that's my big why. Thanks so much for asking. All right, so it is 11.01. Um, I am going to be putting some links in the chat for everyone to take um, before we close. If you do have any questions, last minute questions, go ahead and um, put those in the chat and we will uh, go ahead and get to those. And I'm encouraging everyone else as uh, we're putting the links and everything in to please go back and look at the action guide. Even if you don't have the slides to move forward with it, the picture, you will be able to see, easily see the painted picture. Go back through, ask, um, answer the questions. You know, Use that table and grade yourself to see where you really truly are. Use it as a starting point to help you begin to launch into the deep, okay? And I, I went ahead and put the action guide back in the uh, chat, just in case people missed it before. Awesome. All right. And I'm just kind of pushing through because we're at the end. And Tiffany, I really appreciate you for this opportunity. You guys, um, I know that we had to give you guys this at a fast pace. But again, remember, there's various reasons why we all start a service or a product-based business. Make sure we figure out the ways to differentiate ourselves with that, what separates us, um, and move forward with it. Do what it is that you need to do to succeed. And don't forget, there's pros and cons in everything we do. But as you set your systems up or you map it out and plan, you will succeed and you will have and find the success. It's, it's been an honor. Thank you so much, Tiffany, for allowing me this opportunity. <laughs>